uh, congratulations, Christopher. Oh, this is just spectacular. And this has been, you know, uh, uh, your baby for, well, you know, 10 years it's been kind of gestating in, in your mind. Do you, are you the kind of guy that wakes up in the middle of the night and go, I gotta write that down? Uh, I am, but I'm also the kind of guy who never has a pen by the side of the bed, and so I go, you know what, I'll remember it, and I go back to sleep, and then I don't remember it. Uh, but I've, I've learned that about myself over the years, so uh, I try and do my best work while I'm awake, but <laughs> you know, it tends to stick better. Hence, keep the pen next to you when you sleep. Yeah, I should really uh, start doing that. <laughs> um, where, you know, how did you even begin? Where did you even, you know, it took you so long to get this going, but where, how did it all come about for you? It all really started from just an interest in, in dreams and the relationship with films and portrayal of dreams in films. And what I felt I'd never seen was the portrayal of, of a dream that you could believe in its reality. That is to say, one of the key lines in the film is dreams feel real while we're in them. And so I wanted to make a film where the experience of dreaming was addressed in that real way. So even as something extraordinary is happening, you're invested in the, in the reality of, of that world. Because movies, I think, are one of the great ways in which you can open up a world for the audience and really take them someplace, take their minds someplace they might not otherwise go. Yeah, and who really cannot relate to this? We all dream. We all dream. It's a, it's a universal experience, uh, but a very private one. And uh, I think that tension is very interesting to me, and the idea that there might be a technology that would reconcile that tension and, and remove the barriers between us as we dream so that we could share the same dream. I think the implications of that are fascinating and kind of frightening and that's really the whole story yeah speaking of that yeah the privacy issue because i was talking to killian about it and he, he was, gets all freaked out but it's like is there nothing sacred anymore like could you even imagine if somebody could go into your head and enter your dream i think it's a very good thing that people can't do that i think it's a very good thing that there are aspects of our minds that remain private and individual yeah, that's for sure, because it would be, yeah, there's, there's already too much out there with internet and everything. Come on, you got to have something private. Definitely. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your casting, because what a great, eclectic, mm. international cast you have here. Let's, of course, start with Leo, because he's just tremendous in this role. How much time did you guys spend together to get, you know, not just the, the stunt work, the action, on, but that emotional level that he has to carry in this film? Leo's... Uh creatively a very demanding actor you know when he looks at a script he needs that character to adhere to the, the truths of the characterization the truths of the, the person that he's playing and so we spent months and months uh meeting a couple times a week for hours at a time analyzing the script and talking through how the emotional truth of the character is guiding the narrative how, how are those things are reconciled and my job really was to try and reconcile that input with the mechanism of the story and the way that the story has to flow. Uh, but it's incredibly invigorating, it's incredibly uh, exciting to work with a creative collaborator who is so disciplined and so on it and so demanding of you know, the, the finished product. And um, Ellen Page, you know, our, our good Canadian gal, yeah. like who would have thunk? I mean, seriously, she is fantastic in this. Yeah, she's, she's really extraordinary. And what she does that's very hard to find really, you know, she's, she's an actor who can radiate incredible intellectual curiosity. And that's really the essence of the character. You've got a character who has to be, she's the newcomer to the team. And so she's the character the audience can identify with as they explore the world. She has to ask all the questions that the audience wants to ask. But she's got to do that as a real person. And, and, and the way to do that was sort of youthful energy and intellectual curiosity. You had to believe in her as somebody who wants to explore all these things, wants to know all these things. Of, you know, about the world and the way the world works and the people she's going into this with. There's not many directors that can pull this off, and my God, did you ever do a good job on this? And I just want to know personally, how do you keep it all together? How do you not go home at night and rip out your hair? Well, <laughs> sometimes I do, yeah. Uh, no, I, I actually find it, uh, I just find it much more interesting to be able to challenge yourself on a project, to be given the opportunity that, that so many aspiring filmmakers would, ha would you know, kill for, to be able to do something that you think is really worthwhile and really different on a grand scale uh, so that you can employ all of the technical devices that we do in the film, and travel the world and put all these sort of big action set pieces on screen and in the service of ideas that you're fascinated by. It's a, it's a huge privilege really and so I just enjoyed it tremendously quite frankly and, and really tried to 
take advantage of, the, of the, um, the opportunity that I'd been given. And, you know, kudos to you because you really try to shoot as much as you physically can. I mean, mm -hmm. you, there's a stunt there, I want to try it. You know, not, not to rely that much on the CG. I mean, of course, you have to have some in there. But, you know, for example, that zero gravity room and putting what you put uh, Joe through, my goodness, <laughs> like, whoa, he did a f fantastic job. He did do an incredible job. Uh, I mean, the, the torturous different you know, rigs and harnesses and situations we put them into. Uh, uh, I would have uh, found it very, very hard achieving those sequences with, with any other actor, I think. Uh, he really uh, rose to the challenge incredibly well. I had, I'd warned him how difficult it was going to be, and he just took that and ran with it, and he's in every, every shot. I mean, I think there's one shot where we used the stunt guy. Uh, everything else, Joe insisted on doing himself, and uh, the, the athleticism that required the acrobatic skill uh, is extraordinary. Much more, I think, than you even realize watching it because he makes it look effortless. He really does. Was there any um, you know, scene in particular, Chris, that you were so jazzed about shooting? I think some of those scenes uh, that Joe was involved with, uh, particularly the, the fight scene where gravity is distorting and, and uh, changing, uh, it was really amazing to be able to just photograph something in camera, process the film, watch it the next day in dailies, and all of us sit there in dailies and, and go, wow, I've just never seen anything like that before. That was, that was really incredible and wouldn't have been possible without, without Joe's hard work. And then, you know, of course there's the, the stunt stuff, but the skiing and, you know, what you put, you know, you really have to, not, not just having the, the actors trust you, you got to really trust them too. Yeah, I mean, there's, a, you know, the trust uh, works both ways uh, and uh, it was a really terrific group of people and they were prepared to do anything, really. Uh, and really go to the mat for this one, and, and that is extraordinarily valuable to me as a director. It's it's pretty amazing testament to the, these talented people that, that we were able to do so many different things uh, with, frankly, such ease. I mean, I don't know if it was easy for them, but they certainly made it look easy. Yeah, they sure did. Um, it must be also refreshing for you as a director. Yeah, I'm sure you know every single movie you'd probably want to tell your cast. Don't talk about it. You know, it's secretive. I want people to go in and not know anything. And for this, I mean, it really works. But don't you wish you could just do that for every single movie? Well, I sort of do do that for every single movie that I do. Uh, in fact, really, I, I think all it amounts to is, is information technology over the last few years has just uh, become more and more prevalent. And so people expect access to information. They expect to know about things before they've even happened, really. Uh, and in the filmmaking process, which is an inherently slow and laborious process, I mean, it takes years to make a film. Uh, it simply isn't possible to, to show people the film or tell them exactly what the film is before you've made it. Uh, and so we try to preserve in a more old-fashioned way. We just try to create a private space, not a secret space, but a private space in which to finish making the film. And then we, we give it to the audience and say, make of it what you will, you know. Yeah, this is going to have, there's going to be great discussions when people come out of the theaters, but what do you as a director, you know, after you've done it all and finished, what do you want people to come out of the audience getting from it? I really want people to be entertained and invigorated by the movie. I want them to be able to just sit back and relax and enjoy the film. And then hopefully they'll find there are certain things or ideas about it that afterwards they might, might rattle around their brains, you know, whatever. But really what I want is for people to enjoy it as an entertainment, as a grand scale action film as a love story as, as all of those things. Well I can't wait to see how you're going to top this one because my god you did a great job on this. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice talking to much. you. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you. Thanks.